Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, how do I add positive and negative fractions and mixed numbers? So, since we're dealing with positive and negative numbers this time, we need to remember our integer rules. So when we're adding fractions and mixed numbers, if the numbers have the same signs, then we're going to add the absolute values and keep that same sign. If the signs are different, then we will subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. Okay, and then remember the steps for adding fractions and mixed numbers. We need to find a common denominator and write out equivalent fractions, and then we'll add the numerators and leave the denominator the same. If there are mixed numbers, we can add the whole number parts and the fraction separately, or we can convert the mixed number to an improper fraction and add them together. And then make sure to write your answer in simplest form. So let's look at number one. The signs are the same, so that means that my final answer will be negative. And since the signs are the same, I'm going to add here. So I'm going to add 3 fourths and 7 eighths, and then just make that final answer negative since they're both negative. I have a problem though, 3 fourths and 7 eighths do not have common denominators. I can get this denominator to be 8 really quickly though by multiplying by 2. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. And I get 6 eighths plus seven eighths. If you want to put the negative, you can, but we know the final answer is going to be negative. And then six plus seven is 13. So I get 13 eighths. And then the last thing I need to do is convert that to a mixed number. So I'm going to divide 13 by eight. It can go in one time and I'm left with five. So my final answer was negative. Like we talked about the whole number is one and then it was five eighths. Okay, let's look at number two. I have negative five sevenths plus 11 fourteenths. So I have different signs, so I'm going to be subtracting here. And then the sign of my final answer will be positive because 11 fourteenths is bigger than negative 5 sevenths, the absolute value of it. Okay, now I need to get common denominators. So I can quickly turn this 7 into a 14 by multiplying by 2 over 2. And I get 10 sevenths, negative 10 sevenths, or negative 10 fourteenths, because I have to multiply the 7 by 2 as well plus 11 fourteenths. So now I'm going to subtract these 11 fourteenths minus 10 fourteenths and then the final answer will be positive since 11 fourteenths had the bigger absolute value. And I just get 1 fourteenth. Okay, let's look at number three. I have 3 fifteenths plus negative 7 over 10. So I'm going to be subtracting here since they have different signs. And the answer of, or the sign of my final answer will be negative because 7 tenths is bigger than 3 fifteenths. Okay, now I need to get common denominators. So if I start listing out multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, I know that 15 can go into 30 as well. So I'm gonna get that common denominator of 30. So I need to multiply this first fraction by two over two and this second fraction by three over three to get those common denominators of 30. And then I end up with six over 30 plus negative 21 over 30. Okay, now I'm going to subtract the numerators since they were different signs and I'll make my final answer positive. So I need to think of it as 21 minus 6, which is 15. So the final answer is negative 15 over 30. And remember it was negative because the absolute value of 7 tenths is bigger than the absolute value of 3 fifteenths. And then the last thing I need to do is simplify and negative 15 over 30 simplifies to negative one half. 
Okay, let's look at number four. I have mixed numbers, negative 11 and five, six plus 20 and four ninths. So I am doing a negative plus a positive. These are different signs. So that means that my fine, or I will be subtracting here. Since I have different signs, I'm gonna be subtracting. And then my final answer will be positive because 20 and 4 ninths is bigger than the absolute value of 11 and 5 sixths. Okay, so we're going to subtract. Final answer will be positive. Now let's go ahead and try to subtract these numbers. 5 6 and 4 ninths do not have common denominators. If I list out multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 9 can go into 18 as well. So let's get those common denominators of 18 by multiplying this first fraction by three over three and the second fraction by two over two. And I get negative 11 and 15 over 18 plus 20 and eight over 18. Okay, now I need to subtract here, but I have an issue. If I rearrange this to do 20 and 8 eighteenths minus 11 and 15 eighteenths, this fraction is smaller than this fraction. So I need to borrow from the 20. So I'm going to change the 20 to a 19 and then I will add 18 eighteenths. Okay, so this is going to turn into 19 and then 18 plus 18. 8 would be 26 minus 11 and 15 eighteenths. Okay, now I can subtract the like parts. 9 minus 11 is 8, and then 26 minus 15 is 11. So the fraction is 11 eighteenths. And then our final answer was positive since the absolute value of 20 and 4 ninths was bigger. Okay, let's look at number five. I have different signs. So I'm going to be subtracting. And my final answer will be negative since the absolute value of negative 12 and 3 fourths is bigger than 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, now let's go ahead and start trying to subtract these. The first thing I notice is I do not have common denominators, so I need to create those common denominators. I'm gonna list out the multiples of three. Three, six, nine, 12. Four can go into 12 as well. So I'm gonna create those common denominators of 12. So I'm gonna multiply this first fraction by four over four, and the second fraction by three over three. And then I get 6 and 8 twelfths plus negative 12. And then 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so I need to subtract these and then just make the final answer negative. So I'm going to rearrange these into the larger 12 and 9 twelfths minus 6 and 8 twelfths. Okay, now I just subtract the whole parts. 12 minus 6 is 6, and then 9 minus 8 is 1. So the answer is 6 and 1 twelfth, and remember we talked about how the final answer needs to be negative. All right, last one, number 6. The signs are the same, so this time I get to add. And then both of the signs are negative, so I'll keep that negative sign. So I just want to add these two numbers together, but I don't have common denominators. I can change this 2 over 7 to have a denominator of 14. So I'm going to multiply that fraction by 2 over 2. And I get negative 9 and 4 fourteenths plus negative 30 and 11 fourteenths. Okay, now I'm gonna add these together. So nine plus 30 is 39. And then I am going to add the fractions. So four fourteenths plus 11 
that's supposed to be a 14. Would be 15 over 14, and I make this negative since they were both negative. Okay, so we get negative 39 and 15 14 I just have an issue. This 15 14 is an improper fraction. So I'm gonna change that to a mixed number. So 14 can go into 15 one time, and then I have a remainder of one. So if I'm looking at this 39 and 15 14 I just changed that 15 14 to one and one fourteenth. So now I need to combine that one with the 39 and I get 40 and then one fourteenth. And remember it was negative since both of the signs were negative in the beginning.